Hello? Get over here! I really love this game! <laughs> huh. How is everybody on this Monday afternoon? You know what? It's, uh, uh, how is everybody on this, at this particular time right now? Because you guys are all over the place. So it could be evening for you guys. It could be morning for you guys. It could be same afternoon, same as me. I hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, I just got a, um, text message from my brother saying there was a shooting in Nashville. I know nothing about this, but my brother lives pretty close to Nashville. That's awful. So I don't want to start the stream out on a bad note, but um, I don't even I don't even know what to say. I haven't had my phone on me for the last like hour. I've been getting stuff done before I went live, and uh, I didn't I didn't know. But I I honestly I I try to stay away from the news anyway because there's always something going on. There's always some sadness that people want to capitalize on, and it gives me so much anxiety. Like. When you become a parent and then you start like sending your kid to school, 
you can't read about stuff like that because it will it'll haunt my dreams. I won't I won't ever be able to sleep and I'll never be able to send Charlotte to school ever again. So um, that just makes me really sad. I don't I don't know details. Uh, but um, so that was a nice text to get right before I went live. Awesome. My brother's really having a hard time right now. He's really, really struggling. There are a lot of things that are happening in his life that are kind of chaotic and crazy. And um, my heart just really goes out for him. I hope, I hope we can, I hope, I hope he can make it through. Um, it was a female gun person. Oh, wow. That's surprising. Well, I, I honestly, it all just, it all just really makes me sad because, okay, so this is going to, this is going to sound kind of silly, but, um, I just beat the game Chicory last night, which is, it was started on Kickstarter and, um, uh, it's like an indie game. It's very Zelda ish. It's very like the, um, the, um, <laughs> First of all, I have to say hello to everybody because we have so many cool people here. We've got Chain, who was first in chat. I think that's a first. We've got Rumi, who's spamming the the uh, Stixel, Stixel party emotes. We've got Grandpa. Grandpa and I share a love for the Oddworld game series. I don't know how many of you have played Oddworld, but Oddworld is great. If you are looking for games that are unique, that have really unique world building, and have really great, um, pretty good storylines and some great puzzles. Uh, Oddworld is your, Oddworld's your thing. Although Stranger's Wrath isn't really a puzzle game, but um, the first two are, but. We've got X22, who I believe is over in the UK. We've got DadBots, ShineSpark, good to see you guys, how are you? Michael, also lovely to see you. <laughs> I really love this game. We've got Alcondros! Um, uh, my girlfriend is worried that about that with Ava as well. Told her we can always homeschool. Homeschooling? I tried homeschooling and I was terrible at it. If I'm forced to homeschool, I will homeschool. But I, I was really bad at it. And I and Charlotte really thrives in the school environment. Um, Femi, good to see you. And DJ, I just saw your post, your mother-in-law post. <laughs> Maybe I should, maybe I should make that like a decal, like a car decal. Do you know how many women would absolutely sport that? <laughs> I'm a mother-in-law, mother-in-law, like a men in black. They would tout that. I hope I am a good mother-in-law someday, but of course Charlotte tells me she's never getting married. So um, there's that. <laughs> I just kind of let that, I just let that be. I don't argue with her. I don't go, oh, stop. Of course you're going to get married. I'm just like, okay, that's fine. Because the idea of being away from us and like all of that totally freaks her out. And she has this kid in our congregation that's got a crush on her. And that's kind of a saga. And it makes her really, really uncomfortable. And she does COVID, not yo. like, it's fresh. COVID was homeschooling. Yes, that's true. Um, I, uh, I did. I, you know what? I, I, kind of homeschooled her during COVID, um, but she did learn to read and she's reading far above her grade level. She's reading a middle grade book right now. Um, so that was my, that was like my crowning moment of 2020 and like the 2020, 2021 school year, technically, was I was like, you know what? I sucked at homeschooling and I was a basket case and that was the hardest year of my life, but my kid learned how to read and she's reading on a on a much higher level than most of the kids in her class. And I'm not saying that like tooting my own horn or whatever, because honestly she did it because she wanted to. She didn't, she didn't, uh, I didn't have to sit there and like force her and be like, come on, you've got to do this. She wanted to learn and so she did. And she, what she really wanted to read was uh, Calvin and Hobbes actually. And she did, she taught herself, like I helped her kind of along and she, she did it. Uh, Scorpio. Oh, good. So good to see you, Scorpio. I know you are a busy, busy person right now. I really hope, I, you know what? I know my brother can get through this too, but I, I just, my, my heart just breaks for, you know, obviously for anybody that's, um, that's struggling, but when it's your own family and it's somebody that you care deeply about and you can't do much about it. I mean, these are kind of things that only he can really work with, you know, their problems with his job and problems with, um, you know, just all, you know, his, his kids have a lot of issues because of past trauma in their lives. And it just makes for a really complicated situation. So, um, 
uh, my heart just breaks because I don't, I don't like to see suffering from anybody. I don't want to, um, I don't, I don't like anybody suffering. And I, and I know that suffering is part of life and you know, we, we are, I believe we were put on this earth to, to suffer trials and whatnot because they make us stronger, but that doesn't mean the trials are awesome. And that doesn't mean we, I mean, we're supposed to be grateful for our trials, but that can be really hard. That can be super, super hard. Uh, the lunch Twitch scene is pretty barren. Oh, well, that's a good, that's a good thing that I streamed during the lunch Twitch scene that I guess, uh, Dad bots was homeschooled until high school. Our kiddo is pretty smart, so I'd like to send her private if possible. I would pay for private in a heartbeat if I could. Uh, we can't do that financially right now, um, but she's she's a smart kid as well. And and ultimately, I don't think that's very hard. I think most of the time, kids are willing to learn if you are willing to teach them them, and if you're willing to have legit conversations with them instead of just be like, whatever, we'll talk about this later, or you wouldn't understand. I don't ever say that to Charlotte because I, if she asks me a question. I try to give her the best answer I can. And if I can't figure out the answer, we look it up together. And that's just, that's just how I personally do things. I'm also a huge talker. And so um, my girls both learned to talk pretty early because I just talk all the time. <laughs> 2020, 2021, yes. <laughs> Shout out to COVID for ruining all our lives for a couple years. You know what though? COVID, um, that was kind of when I, well, I don't know, when did I start streaming? Well. I guess I did start streaming video games in 2020, didn't I? Or maybe it was the end of 2019. When did Twitch Sings go under? Was it the end of 2019? Because Twitch Sings wasn't around. Oh, was it around during 2020? Gosh, now I can't even remember. Um, my middle kid, Scorpio, says, I'm in a bit of a valley these days, too. He is not alone. I know. I know. And he... He, I, I think part of the problem is that he doesn't have a whole lot of community right now because he's not really in the music scene much anymore. Um, and that's a huge long story. That's his business and not my business and not anybody else's business. But, um, you know, he didn't, he doesn't have, he kind of lost that community, which now that he's looking back on it, he's like, it really wasn't much of a community at all because when I left it, everybody was just kind of like, okay, well, bye. That I don't have any lasting relationships from any of that. And that's hard, that's really hard. And I believe everybody needs a sense of community. Everybody needs a f at least a few people that they can count on. And my brother and his family have been kind of isolated for a while because like I said, there have been issues in the past that his children have experienced that have caused them to become um, super big um, homebodies and they just don't go out ever at all, anywhere. My middle kid is our reader. He read all the Harry Potters twice last year and now he's on Keeper of the Lost Cities. I've never heard of Keeper of the Lost Cities. Charlotte is watching, um, she's watching or she's reading Wings of Fire or something. It's some dragon book. It's a middle grade book. And I was like, Charlotte, we checked it out from the library. And I was like, look, this is a big book. I'm not saying you can't understand the words. I'm just saying the chapters are long and the book is long. I know you can understand what you're reading, but if like, she's used to like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which is, I don't know, what, 200 pages and a lot of those are pictures, but those are still pretty relatively high reading level for her. She's, but then again, she technically should be in third grade, but because of where her birthday falls, she's the oldest in her second grade class. Um, but she was like, no, I love it. I love it. I want to keep it. And I was like, okay, but she's, She's, she's trying, she's trying and I love that. And then she'll pick up another chapter book and then she'll pick up another chapter book. So she's got like three books going at one time and it's crazy. Uh, I streamed four out of the five days. How do I feel? I streamed four out of five days. I guess I streamed Sunday, Friday, Wednesday and Monday. I feel pretty good, but I feel like if I were to add one more stream, it might start to feel a little I have to wait and see what happens after Katie and I finish Portal. Then I will decide if I'm gonna add like a weekend stream, like on, an, on a weekend night and make it like an extra kind of a longer stream and stream kind of late because um, Auden wakes up early in the morning, but I can always take a nap when she goes down. Uh, we appreciated COVID in that Ava wasn't even one yet when the lockdown started. It was nice being home for a lot of her firsts. That's a lot of, that a lot of people miss out on. Well, that's actually why Andrew decided to become self-employed because he said, I don't want to miss I don't want to miss things. I don't want to miss Charlotte's first steps. I don't want to miss her first words. And now that he's working full, full, full time and he's bishoping, he's missed almost all of Auden's firsts. So that's just kind of how it goes. 
Oh, that's true. I did move my Wednesday stream to Thursday, didn't I? That's right. I forgot about that. That was when everything got crazy. That was when like my life, like I had a couple really, really rough days around that point. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm better now, but man, there were a couple days where I was like, for the freaking love, I, I was, I was, I, I had a couple really, really, really bad days. Um, uh, Ander says, people that are self-employed are the only people, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are the only people that are willing to work, instead of working 40 hours in a cubicle, they'll work 80 hours out somewhere, whatever it is they're doing. He's like, they're the only people that will work 80 hours a week to avoid a 40 hour work week. <laughs> and like, I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing because it's true. He um, worked for Wells Fargo for a while and um, actually he really liked Wells Fargo and it was a good job. It was a really good job. It was nice having him come home at the same time every day. That was really nice. That was good for my mental health because I had just had Charlotte and I was a basket case. I was really sick when I first came home with Charlotte. My maternity leave was, <clears throat> but um, it was so great to at least look at the clock and be like, okay, I only have this many more minutes, this many more hours or this, yeah, this many more? Anyway, but now it's like, I don't know. I don't know when Anders is gonna be home. I don't know, I'm not really sure. I have no idea. I mean, he's like, he's he comes home, but he's out on the lake a lot. That's right, I forgot. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Um, That's church for me, uh, as well as streaming. And yesterday, for whatever reason, I was like, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to socialize. I didn't want to do any of that. When church was over, I was like, come on, Charlotte, we're out. Let's go. <laughs> I was just out. I did not want to have anything to do with anybody. And it's not that I had any problems with anybody, but I was just like, I want to get home. I got a stream with my sister. We got stuff to do. I got to get my baby down. It takes forever. You get home. You got to make lunch. You got to put something on the stove. I had to make mac and cheese or something. And then Auden wouldn't eat them and then eat them, eat the mac and cheese. <laughs> anyway, I thought we might be able to stream earlier than my projected time of like two to 2.15. And it was looking that way. And then all of a sudden, like Auden just was like, no, I'm not eating anything. And I was like, you haven't eaten since seven o'clock this morning or eight o'clock this morning. Why wouldn't you eat anything right now? Oh, she took forever. So sure enough, I think we went live at like 2.15, so. And now I have all the upgrades so, um, it is literally just, uh, hide and seek at this point. It is just hide and seek. Just finding stuff, finding artifacts, finding secrets, because Meta Ridley is going to kick my booty. I can tell you right now. Well, I don't know. I didn't, may, mm, maybe not. Maybe not. Because this is on normal. It's okay. It's on normal. <gasps> Look at her. She is so pretty. She is so purty. I need to turn this up in my headphones. But anyway, I hope everybody else is having a, a, a good day. And I didn't mean to come out of the gate with, like, bad news. But um, that's part of life. And that's part of, like, that happens, unfortunately. I'm not one to go digging into all sorts of crazy stuff that happens. Because it gets into my brain and it gets under my skin. And I can't, I can't get it out of my brain. And so it really, really does a number on my, on my sake. 24 hour news feed isn't good for anybody. I'll tell you what. How do I get to Talon? I need to get to that Chozo temple before I, oh. I just need to go forward, okay. I need to get to that Chozo temple and scan everything before I go start collecting artifacts. Because if I, if I collect all the artifacts and then go there... Oh, I think I just messed around with y'all's volume. I'm sorry. But it is a Monday, so sometimes Mondays can be not great days. Um, see, I don't really get weekends. Like, I kind of do. I will say our watch party this weekend was great. We had a super great time. It was an awesome time together. We got like four four episodes watched or something. We're almost done with book one. And I think that one has the most uh, uh, episodes. I think, I think the other ones only have like 16 or something. So we are almost done with book one. I think we have four more episodes. 
and then we will be officially done with them. Oh, we go off to the left. Me and the wife have been in this weird place with our friends. They're all been building their dream homes and buying new cars and going on Disney trips. We live in a modest home with adequate cars and only hope for a vacation. But on the flip side, the husbands are never home and their marriages are possibly on thin ice. I'm home at 445 and me and the wife still like being around each other. You know what? That is huge. I remember thinking the same thing because when I did lashes and all my clients were super wealthy and they would talk about all their trips and they'd talk about all the crazy stuff that they would do and all the places they'd go. I swear, every single, every single time there was a, there was a vacation from school, they were gone. Cause they all had like Southwest points and they all had all sorts of things and they were gone. Even if it was just like a three day weekend, they would always fly somewhere. And I would just remember being like, do you really have to go somewhere every time there's a three day weekend? Like heaven forbid your kids don't travel somewhere. So I remember kind of being frustrated by that. And then I reached a point where I was like, you know what? These women are literally parenting completely alone. Their husbands work and because they have so much money. It's because their husbands work over, you know, they work out of town. They work maybe not overseas, but they're gone all the time. They travel for work all the time and that can cause problems in, in relationships. And uh, there's an artifact here, I know there is. And so I remember being like, so what? what is important to me? Do I want lots of money? Or do I want like a good... <laughs> you know what, Hilly? It appears, oh, which, which one is it? You know what, Hilly? It appears you've been eating too much pie. You can't prove anything, Hilly. There's that scene when they're like fighting and she flicks the cigarette at her. Skater! You can't prove anything, Hilly. Why, Hilly? Why, Hilly, you're, you're a mess. Mrs. Phelan. Okay, that scene in the movie doesn't actually happen in the book. I wish it did, but that scene when Skeeter's mom like tells Hilly off and says, I think you've been eating too much pie, that doesn't actually happen in the book. There is a scene where, where Skeeter's mom like comes out while she and Skeeter are fighting, but she's basically like, oh, Hilly, what, you just look, you look just, you are a mess. I'm gonna call the hair appointment. I'm gonna make a hair appointment for you tomorrow and you're gonna go get your hair done. All right, have a good night, bye bye y'all. And she goes to bed. That's what happens in the book, but that sucks. Cause I love that scene. I've watched that scene so many times. Why, Hilly? Is this where I just came in? I swear. Did I just turn myself around? I did. Wow, oh, I am smart. <laughs> I got mixed up fighting all those, what are they, puffers? Whatever they are. Why, Hilly? It appears you've been eating too many pies. That was part of the deal when I came back to my old company. I returned to the industry after I found I, I had a kid on the way, told them I couldn't travel. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I mean, the money's really good. Like my clients were living it up, but ultimately I was thinking, are they really happy though? Like, I don't know. And I'm not saying that's the only way to, you know, have a good life, like, and, and be financially secure, not by any means, but I just, I'm gonna walk through that fire. <laughs> They said, you know what we expect. And I said, I know that. So I'm telling you what I can do. Had an offer in an email within an hour. Well, there you go. Look at that. Fancy. Do you ever get a, no, I was gonna say, do you ever get a suit where you can actually walk in lava? But no, this black suit is the cool one. Travel is brutal, cuts both ways to be sure. Yeah, it does. And like I said, like I remember my clients were always going places and they had all these Southwest points and everything. So like they were, on the surface, they looked really happy. But I know for a fact there was infidelity happening. In infidelity happening. I remember hearing about a client of mine that, you know, I'd worked on for a while and she stopped coming to see me after a while. And I was like, okay, you know, pe people did that all the time. But then I heard like through the grapevine that she ended up like moving to California or something because she found out her husband wasn't being faithful to her during all his travels. And I'm not saying all people who travel experience that, but I'm just saying, uh, time apart 
uh, excessive amounts of time apart can cause can cause problems. And that's really, really hard. It takes kind of a special, special person. I just remember most of my clients, like, they never saw their husbands ever. But on the other hand, they also had the money to like put their kids in private school and hire nannies and, you know, like I don't have, the, or take their kids to Chuck E. Cheese for 12 hours. Like I don't have the, I don't have the finances to really do all that, but. <laughs> Technically, you can walk in lava in any suit for any amount, for a short, short amount of time. Short amount of time. Uh, <laughs> movies better than books, confirmed. Um, so I love the Help movie. Uh, it, actually, I think it might be free on YouTube right now. Oh, <gasps> I think it is. <gasps> and look, there is a red door up there. But it's an artifact. I bet you, I bet you anything. You can't create anything hilly. <laughs> I love the scene when, um, uh, this is also different in the book, but I really love the scene when, um, <laughs> what's her faces? Um, uh, oh, Jessica Chastain plays her. Who is she? Celia. Celia. I'm Celia. Celia Foot. I brought a pie. Um, when she, when her husband gets home for the first time and, and um, Minnie is like walking away and she like drops the bag and grabs a stick and she's like, Miss Celia! Cause she's afraid he's gonna like hurt her. <laughs> and he's like, Minnie, stop, stop. Miss Celia! She's freaking out. I love the movie so much. I cried pretty much the entire time I watched that movie. I just sobbed, like just pretty consistently the entire time. I couldn't stop. Uh, that book was so, I could not, I just can't, I just can't believe people, I can't believe people um, act that way. I just cannot ever imagine treating somebody so poorly. I'm sorry, is that not what I was supposed to do? Oh, oh, I just can't imagine legitimately thinking I am better than somebody because of the color of my skin. I just, I, I, it just doesn't compute to me. There were so many scenes in that book that just made me want to scream. Some people love travel. I've worked with several who are always flying around, world, around the world. That's true. That's fair. There are some people who love it. I don't love traveling, but I will do it to get to cool places and experience cool things. Ander is not willing to do those things. He just gets irritated and does not appreciate travel at all. He's like, he told me the other day, he was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get on an airplane again. And I was like, really? It's that bad for you? Like, come on now. It's really, oh, hello. Is that hiding? I mean, it is hiding, I guess. Um, where are you at on Steel Magnolias? So I've actually never seen Steel Magnolias. I've seen rotten tomato, not rotten tomatoes, wow. Fried green tomatoes, I am rotten tomatoes. I'm thinking of the website. Seen fried green tomatoes. I've never seen steel magnolias, but I can almost guarantee it'll probably make me cry. I've also never seen driving Miss Daisy. Um, I, I have to, I, I do have to be careful because I don't really like watching movies that make me cry. Um, but I had to watch The Help because I read the book and I loved the book. I just recently re-listened to the book and I'd forgotten a lot about it, a lot about it. Um, it's a wonderful book, I think it's great. Um, but the movie was a very close, very, very close uh, adaption. It was, it was done really, really well. The cast was perfect. I loved Jessica Chastain as Celia Foote. I thought she did a wonderful job. Um, Skeeter, what's her name? Emma Stone is Skeeter. Yeah, it was it was all great. Every the whole cast. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard as Hilly was top notch. I feel like there aren't there wasn't. Oh, I have a Dr Pepper. <gasps> I haven't even opened it yet. I am. I'm an import Southern. Yes, I have not. I am. I am not native to the Southern states. Oh my gosh, it's Red Monster. How are you? There's another person from my past. I had somebody else come into the chat the other day that claimed they knew me and that was kind of weird for a minute, but we figured out who that was and that was good. It was great. How are you? How is your streaming going? Tell me what you stream again. I remember looking that up and I, now I can't remember. 
I do have some Southern movies to catch up on. It's true. But here's the thing. I'm not a movie person. I don't watch movies that often. I really don't. I don't watch movies nearly as often as I probably should. But that's just because... I would rather sit here and play games and hang out with you guys than sit and watch a movie. Um, Star Citizen? I don't even know. I've never even heard of Star Citizen. That just goes to show you what I know. Space Sim stuff, and then I'm adding, adding Kerbal Space Program too. I love space stuff! That's so cool. I love space stuff so much. I loved my astronomy um, course in, uh, or, okay, I took an astronomy course when I was in high school, and actually I hated it because the teacher terrified me. But when I took the astronomy, when I did astronomy in, like, I think it was ninth grade, I loved it. I was obsessed. I could not get enough. I'll never go to space. You could not pay me enough to go to space. But I appreciate all the science behind it, and I think it is so cool. But you couldn't ever pay me enough money to go to space because it's... I know what happens in space. <laughs> I know exactly what lives out in space. <laughs> we haven't found them yet, <laughs> right? Maybe all the aliens just... Maybe they just come here and then they just like they're like oh yeah no don't stop at earth just don't just don't even get gas there like just keep going because <laughs> every time they every time they make a make an appearance here it's like skipper bud and cletus out on the bayou going i saw me in space i saw a ufo maybe that's mean i don't know i'm just saying most of the time when you hear these like like ufo sightings it's like, okay. In this day and age with smartphones, you can't get a better picture than some little grainy picture. Come on now. Um, I would go to space even if it was a one-way trip. No, absolutely not. I've never seen Smokey and the Bandit either, but you know what movie I have seen is Bandits with, um, uh, uh, what's their faces? Um, Billy Bob Thornton and, uh, or this is a Chozo artifact. Cool. You do the same type of thing in Metroid Prime 2. I don't think you do this in Metroid Prime 3. Mm -mm. This is as if we've, this is our first Chozo artifact. It is not. Actually, you know what? My brother claims he saw a UFO and his story was totally believable. He was like, I just saw like lights up in the sky that were like separating out. And when they separated, they all turned white. No lies. When they separated, they all turned into different colors. And then when they came back together, they turned white. And then they would separate and blink different colors and then they'd come back together and they turned white. And I had nightmares because I got so scared. Because <laughs> you guys know me. I actually shared some fun news recently. I got a little Miss Red coming at the end of August. Oh, congratulations. That's so great. Ooh, better start saving for a pony now. <laughs> she gonna be wrapped around your finger. Girls are fun. Girls are really fun. Uh, they're dramatic. But man, they are so fun. I have two girls and I would have been perfectly happy with a boy uh, or two boys, but I can honestly say boys are insane. <laughs> I've witnessed all my friends with boys. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they're totally nuts. I don't think I would make a very good boy mom. I could be wrong, but I, I think I was destined to be a girl mom, but I would have been perfectly happy with either one. We weren't like, oh, well, we're really hoping for a girl or whatever. That's not how we were, but that is so exciting, Red. I'm so excited for you. Being a parent is great. Uh, it's stressful and it's really hard. Um, let me give you some advice. Um, my, the only book you need is Baby 411. It's the only book you need across the board. They come out with a new one probably every year or so. Also Toddler 411. That will literally give you all the info you need. None of those other books are worth it. Go Baby 411 and you won't need another book. Promise, 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 promise. That is the one thing I tell everybody when they're about to become new parents. Baby 411. That's the only book you need. Only one. I saw something weird in the sky when I was a kid. Had a neighborhood friend that saw it too. Oh, see? See? 
I wasn't trying to, to, to be mean. These days people, people can get really, really mad about certain things. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but all I'm saying is, I feel like a lot of times people will, you know, you talk to these, you see these, okay, no, what, here is what it is. You see these interviews on TV and they're like, well, I was sitting out on the water and I was night fishing, cat fishing with some hot dogs and I looked up in the sky and there was this bright light that happened in the sky. At least that's, the, those are the ones I've seen. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't ever stop here. The containment of the great poison. This task has fallen to the Chozo. And we will not flee from our duty, even as we suffer with the land and its creatures. You know what? I never actually realized that this is what took the Chozo out. We will pour our will into the Twelve, the artifacts which form the lock that holds this great evil at bay in the depths of the planet. This lock must stand up to all who might come to assault it. To preserve the power of the seal and to protect it from those who would meddle for their own designs, we will spread the artifacts across the land hiding them from prying eyes. The lock must never open until the day comes when this disaster can finally be put right. <laughs> okay. If you look up at the sky late at night, you can see some wild stuff. Things I have no idea how it's possible. To this day, Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix had a Michigan episode with the mid 90s event, Bonkers. Harley Quinn, welcome. How are you? Have you ever played this game? And if so, do you love it? Cause it's great. Am I missing lore somewhere around here? Ah, ah, ah. Wait, there was Harley Quinn is among us all y'all. Among us all, all y'all. Hi all y'all. Thank you so much for following my channel. I'm glad you're here. The alien, uh, the alien abduction SNL sketch with Kate McKinnon may be some of the finest comedy in the last 20 years. Okay, I need to write this down. There's another video. I'll see if I can find it and post it on Discord. It's like this guy gets abducted. Uh, alien. And, um... He's, like, sitting there and this alien pops up in front of him and he's like... He's like, hey! Uh, he, like, pulls out, like, a clicker pen, a clicker pen, and he's got a little, like, clipboard. And he's like, so! Click, 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 click. Uh, is this your first abduction? And he's totally businesslike, and the guy's like, what? Where am I? And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. We are just, this is just routine. I've done a million of these, totally fine. You won't remember anything, it'll be totally fine. And so he goes through all these tests and everything, and then he's like, so Earth, do you know uh, Karen? No, you don't know a Karen? Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, that's how I feel being from Utah. People are like, oh my gosh, I know so-and-so that's you from Utah. Do you know the so-and-sos? I'm like, no, I think Utah has a lot of people. Throughout our living nightmare, as we battle with these unyielding, with the, this unyielding darkness, we chose to see a light. This light glows with promise, chasing the shadows cast by the great poison and purifying that which has grown toxic. It is strange though. At times it looks to our eyes as if the light coalesces into the figure of a woman. Burning brightly, the luminescence descends from space, then retreats back into the infinite blackness from whence it came. When this prophecy comes to pass, when the light recedes, the Chozo's long vigilance of containment will finally come to an end. Hi, I'm Samus. I love this game. I just beat th four or three bosses so far. Ooh, this game is so great. So great, you clearly have good taste. Good taste. Can't seem to put it down. <laughs> well then, Retro Studios did their job. Well, now it's literally just a, a game of like, hide and seek pretty much because now I need to find artifacts with secrets along the way and then I'll have my butt handed to me by one boss before another boss hands my butt to me again. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's great. I don't remember where all the other facts are. Um, I was just given a bunch of hints that I didn't read. So let's go back to our logbook. I remember where a few of them are. Just a, just a few of them. Um, pretty sure those types of people have a special magnet that pulls them toward the cameras when they show up. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think you're right. Where's my logbook? There it is. 
Um, I mean, I'll be totally honest. I believe that there is life out there, but I don't believe in aliens. I believe that if there's life out there, they probably look like us. And that's because I believe in a God that created man and woman, or, you know, that created man and woman. And then we can't be the only people in the whole everything. But are we ever going to find them? I don't know. I don't believe in little green men. I don't believe in, like, alien aliens, you know? I had a client one time that, uh, um, she was crazy. She was totally bananas. I mean, I'm not joking. Like, she was certifiably cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And I just finished reading, um, oh, I had already got that one. I just finished reading War of the Worlds. <laughs> and I was like, I was giving her a wax. I was waxing her. And I told her, I just finished reading War of the Worlds. And, um, I don't really believe in little green men, but like, that was a pretty wild story. And she got really serious and she looked me dead in the eye and she goes, there are aliens on this earth right now. And I was scared, actually. I thought she was going to hurt me. And I went, no. Tell me, like, have you seen one? What do they look like? I just let her keep going because I was scared of her. She scared me. <laughs> I was afraid if I was like, okay, she would like launch herself at me. Magmore. A shrine in their honor holds the artifact of strength. I think I already got that one actually. Oh, oh, nope, nope, because it's not lit up. How many artifacts do I have? Two? I only have two? I thought I had more than that. A tower. Oh, I remember where that one is. Okay, you know what? We're gonna go, we are going to go um, place by place, section by section. I believe if they're out there, aliens avoid the earth the way we avoid places preceded by banjo music. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, don't go to earth, you know? <laughs> Hot chicken, tell me what you're missing. Kiss another cluckle while I'm working in the kitchen. Hot chicken. I like the way you listen. Let me tell you something about the loving you've been missing. Uh. Mic drop. <laughs> a sun chamber. High atop our ruined home became the nest of a great beast. Oh, okay. That, I know where that is. Okay, so. Oh, that one has been. A room of research lies within the mines. Oh, I don't want to go back to the mines, but okay. A grove of life lies. Reveal the pillar beneath the waves to find the artifact of Chozo. Uh, I think I got that one, didn't I? Beneath the waves? I, I have a lot of questions, because I feel like, oh. Did I not scan that one? I didn't scan that one either. Oh, beans. Within the ruins of our home, we honor fallen elders in a great hall. Okay, that's Chozo Ruins. Vendrana. Every time I read Vendrana, I just think of Utah names. <laughs> Some person being like, this is our little Vendrana. There's a name idea for you, Red. <laughs> An, uh, pay homage to a Metroid, Metroid Prime. This is little Fendrana. Spelled X Z R X Y L G B T. <laughs> well, I'm not saying people who go see someone to get waxed are crazy, but maybe the idea is just crazy enough to attract some real dandies. She, uh, she was like, she was like drug abuse crazy. Like she was, like she heard voices in her head. She was nuts. Um, and she actually was, uh, um, she was, um, uh, physical with some of the hairstylists, actually. She got to a point where, um, people didn't want to work on her because she was, she, you never knew, like, how she was going to be when she came in. She was crazy. She was loaded, though. I don't know what it was. I think it was, a. I I think it was a, um, 
inheritance from her parents or something. She had so much money. Or so she claimed. She spent it at our salon. I thought I scanned all these. Sun chamber. Shrine. I got that one. I know I did. All. Do they not all have clues? I swear I scanned them all. Oh, that means we have to go back into that research facility. Grab a cop's gun crazy as 30 Rockwood to find it. Yes, she was... She was frightening. She scared me. Um, and I was the only esthetician there, so I was the only one that would wax her. Uh, she had no memory of anything. Like, she would... Or she would, like, come in regularly for a while, and then she'd disappear for a while. And then we wouldn't see her, and we'd be like, is she dead? Like, we don't even know. She could be... We, we never knew. And then all of a sudden, she'd just show up, like, six months later. Come in like nothing happened. I remember we had a desk. We had this big, giant desk that was up at the very front of the salon. And then when you moved... And then we moved the desk back... And so the whole front of the salon was all retail. And it was great because it allowed people to kind of walk around and they had to come past all the retail stuff to check in. And then they had all this space to like walk around and check out the products. And um, uh, she came in one time and she was like, oh, you moved the desk. And we were like, yeah, we moved everything around and looks good, doesn't it? And she was like, yeah, it looks great. And then she came back in, like, for four more appointments after that. And then one day she came in and she goes, Oh, you moved the desk. Like, it had never happened. Like, like we were starting over from five appointments ago. She was bananas. Who, who, or Oko Puffs. She tipped me well, but she scared me. I didn't want to work on her, ever. She scared me. She absolutely terrified me. Okay. They said there's a grove? Well, the only grove I can think of is the one that I got the... What's it called in? The life grove. Nope, that's not it. Life grove? Uh, this one. Life grove. Did I get an artifact there? Beneath the waves? That one will make friends with fentanyl, sounds like. We got a bunch of those around here. Oh, I just watched a little snippet on um, YouTube of the fentanyl crisis in San Francisco. Ooh, that was really sad. That was really, really sad. This is gonna sound like a really stupid question, but if somebody is homeless and living in a tent on a street in San Francisco, how are they getting their hands on fentanyl? Drug dealers have to be paid, right? So what are they doing? Are they stealing? They can't hold jobs. Yeah, it must be the life grove. I must have missed it. I got something there, but I thought like... I got the... No. What did I get there? Oh! You know what? I do think I remember... I do think I remember where the artifact is. I thought I got it, but apparently not. Okay, that's what I thought, because, it, like I said, it sounds kind of like a stupid question, but I was like, how are these people... Drugs are not cheap. And although fentanyl is cheap, drugs are not actually cheap. Oh, I was thinking of this. I got this one. In the meditation chamber. That was an artifact, wasn't it? Hey, it's Jay! Been listening while driving. Did you know that people that named their kid da, da Vulcan after the hero in Skyrim? Oh no, I did not know that, but that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. There are a bunch of, what's her, what's her name? Um, Khaleesi's running around now. <laughs> when people love something, they really love something. <laughs> Red built a spreadsheet for all the possible names. Then Mrs. Red and I raided the names. Oh, we didn't do that. We were just like, I was the one that was like, um, we're naming her Charlotte. And my husband was like, 
Okay. <laughs> because I loved... Actually, the name Charlotte came from Princess and the Frog. I loved Lottie. I think Lottie is a very underrated character. They could have made her really mean, and they didn't. She's really sweet. And, uh... Uh, I just fell in love with her character. I thought she was really sweet. And um, I just, I loved the idea of calling a Charlotte a Lottie. And so I told Ander we were going to name her Charlotte and we were going to call her Lottie. And he was like, absolutely not. She's going to be Charlie. And I was like, absolutely not. And guess what? When she got here, she's just Charlotte. She's never fit a Charlie or a Lottie. Or a Char. Or a Lot. Or anything. She's just Charlotte. The name Auden I heard on a podcast. And I remember thinking, oh, I like that name a lot. It's either going to be a book character or a kid's name. Whatever comes first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guess who's prepared now? This girl. This guy. Oh. Get him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> that was good. That was great. That was really good. I absolutely meant for that to happen. I'm too opinionated for that. Oh, yeah. I was like, um, we're going to name her Charlotte. And my husband was like, okay. He's just not. Hey, it's Uber! D -d 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 Double kill. That actually reminds me of the guy that always commentates Anders bass fishing stuff. He always goes, J -j 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 giant bass. <laughs> and Charlotte learned that early on when she was younger. J -j 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 giant bass. Is this? No, I want to go the other way. She would hold a fish up like in the bathtub like a toy fish and she'd be like, J -j 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 giant bass. That's what we learn in our house. <laughs> how, to, how to commentate like the Bassmaster Classic guy. What's his name? Dave Mercer. Dave Mercer. I remember we went to the Bassmaster Classic, which is basically the um, Super Bowl of of uh, the bass fishing world. Oh, this is not where I want to go. What? I thought I was going in the right direction. Ow. Oh. Beans. Oh, I went one door too early. Dang it. Darn, 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 darn. Uh, the kid who won, his name is Jordan Lee. And Dave Mercer just kept, he kept going, unbelievable. And Andrew was like, you know that it is headphones. They're going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it coming. Unbelievable. <laughs> Over and over and over again. Kid was like 22 and he won like 500 grand, a brand new truck and a brand new boat. Not to mention all the sponsorships he got. Totally insane. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> C -c -c Combo breaker! I don't really like beat em up games. I'm really bad at them. You guys saw me play, um, what are they called? What's it called? Super Smash Brothers. I have no interest in those types of games. I'm bad at them. I don't enjoy them. They're not fun. I can think of other multiplayers that I would rather play than a, than a game like that. Um, shout out and throwback to the time Cage and I played Super Bomberman. That was a blast. Oh my gosh. I love the old school Super Bomberman for Super Nintendo. I've got great memories of playing that game. Falcon Bunch. I never played. Is that from uh, Killer Instinct? Because I never, ever played Killer Instinct. Ever. Ever. Smash Brothers is the only fighting game I'm somewhat good at. I'm just a button masher. I don't know. Like, I don't know any of the combos. I don't know anything. I'm terrible. Okay. Am I going the right direction? I've got to go all the way around the vault. No. Uh, no. I have to go there. Okay, yep, yes. I do remember coming this way and then realizing I was gonna have to fight those x-ray things and not having the x-ray visor and it was not gonna be a good time. So I I opted to come back. I don't wanna, I don't wanna fight these guys. I don't wanna kill you. You're okay. I was trying to avoid you, but that didn't work. 
That's my point. Smash Brothers doesn't have button combos. Oh, well then, maybe it is a good one for me. <laughs> I remember growing up playing a game called Clay Fighters on Super Nintendo with my brother, and that one did have button combos. And that one was funny because, you know, it was all these really silly clay animation creatures that were fighting each other. Um, and I semi enjoyed that one, but I really just, those types of games just aren't really my thing. My sister and brother and I, when we played multiplayer games, we played Super Bomberman, or um, we actually didn't play a whole lot of multiplayer games. Usually it would just be one of us playing the game and then the other two would just be sitting on the couch and we'd just be, you know, hanging out together and laughing and we'd kind of take turns, you know? And I have very fond memories of that. Very, very, very fond memories. <laughs> I'm grateful for my brother and his love of gaming, which gave me my love of gaming. My brother used to play games with my dad. They played Legend of Zelda together. Um, and it's kind of a shame. My dad's not really... I'm not gonna say he's not allowed. He's, it's not that he's not allowed to play video games anymore, but... My stepmom obviously believes there are better things he can do with his time. You remember Clay Fighter? Oh, Clay Fighter was like, it's an oldie but a goodie. Like it was fun, but it wasn't like my favorite. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, guys, let's play Clay Fighter. I'd usually, my brother would usually be like, hey, let's play Clay Fighter. And I'd say, okay. Captain Falcon. I'm pretty formidable, formidable on Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo. But that's where my fighting game expertise begins and ends. I'm terrible at all of it. Super bad, right here. Oh, I have the spring ball. <gasps> oh, that I can't use while I'm... Nice. Oh no! Oh, yeah. This, this is a weird camera angle. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, huh, uh-huh. Oh man, I remember the first time I saw that, playing this game for the first time, and I was like, what are you? Oh my gosh, I feel like that was one of the first times I ever saw, no, that's not the first time you see them. This just in, my child's still not asleep. It's 2.15. Man, I can't win. <sighs> Spring ball, winter ball, fall ball. Summer ball. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I'm gonna... Yep. Hit you real quick. Ugh. Oh, that didn't take him down? I thought that would. Yeah. How awful would it be to watch your buddies die? the hand of me. I don't know. Maybe they don't even notice. Maybe they don't care. I don't know. Who knows? They're just angry. Where are you? Man, getting the x-ray visor. Yeah. These things are the most obnoxious enemies. These are the most obnoxious enemies in Metroid Prime. I think Metroid Prime 2, the most obnoxious enemies are Resbits. I hate, hate Respits so much. You can kill them without the screw attack, but it's almost impossible. I hate them. I usually just run. Do you have to scan every artifact? Or is it just like, I'm a Chozo artifact? Yep, okay. My dad tried PSVR 2 yesterday and said if it was around 25 years ago, maybe he'd still play games. I don't know how my dad would do with VR. I don't know. That's a good. That's that's a great question. I love playing Halo with my dad, but he doesn't even have his Xbox anymore, which makes me sad. Um, church ball. <laughs> he did ask how much a PS5 VR setup would cost him, and he was blown away. Of course he was. Um, that's a mortgage payment. <laughs> Ramen noodle. Literally one of my favorite streamers right now, and I found you randomly asking you a question about Bioshock. Oh, you're so kind. 
It's good to see you. That's right, Bioshock. I forgot I played that. I, all the games I play like all run into one another. That was a trip, man. That was quite the trip. That was a, that was a crazy game. Okay, hold on. I know I had more than two artifacts because I remember getting an artifact in this place, rat, rat, hell, where is it? Here. I remember getting that artifact. But I also remember getting one in Magmore Caverns. But it says I only have two. Yeah, it was. It was the, um, uh, it was the first Bioshock, yes. And I have plans to stream the other ones, just someday, eventually. I have such a big backlog of games I want to stream. The next game I'll be streaming is Darkwood. Um, that was a channel point community challenge that everybody came together and put all their points toward that. It's supposed to be a super spooky game that's not gory. And I love spooky games as long as they're not going to give me absolute, like, horrific nightmares. So... I know nothing about it other than the fact that it's supposed to be spooky. So... We'll see what happens. And if it crashes and burns, well, then we'll play another one. I don't know. There are plenty of games. It's not like there's a shortage. I'll probably do a poll after Darkwood and see what it kind of most people are interested in. I hope I'm going in the right direction. Um, okay. No, for real. Like, I'm... I'm... So, Church Ball... Jay, what's church ball? I'm not even exactly sure what church ball is. Is it just when you play basketball at the church? But they call it church ball because it gets so intense. I was never, I, that was never a thing for me. I never went and played sports at the church building because I was like, I wasn't into sports, never have been. When it comes to storylines, the Bioshock series will always be my favorite. Blew my mind. I loved it. I thought it was great. And it, it really surprised me. The end, I thought I knew what was gonna happen at the end and I was wrong. I was so wrong. It really did surprise me. It was great. It was great fun. I loved it. I had a really great time. And it was great because it was super spooky, uh, but it was more just the atmosphere that was spooky. It wasn't, it wasn't, I, like it would have been really gross and gory if it had been, if it had had better graphics but it just looked very, the art style was very, um, what did Katie call it? It was very um, stylized. It just looked like everybody had like strawberry jelly all over their bodies, honestly. <laughs> Bioshock was goaded. The aesthetically pleasing and just all around gameplay was so smooth. There were some great moments, great streaming moments that came from Bioshock for sure. My dad stopped playing when I started smoking him in NHL 96. He was like, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this. I don't think my dad's held a video game controller since the Magnavox Odyssey 2. <laughs> oh, large daddy! My dad loved Zelda. He loved The Legend of Zelda. Um, and then he loved Halo. Oh, my dad loved Halo. Bless him. I wish... I don't want to. I don't want to badmouth anybody, but I, I do wish he had more time to play Zelda be, or to play Halo. Uh, he's a busy guy, like I know that, but I also think people should be able to do what they like when they're when they have free time. I don't think you should gatekeep that. Kind of, kind of, kind of bugs me. One of my buddies was in a church softball league. Couldn't believe how competitive those teams were. Yeah, that's what I've heard about church ball. I've heard it can get intense. Okay, wait, where did you, where were you? So you were in a, you were in a town that had most, a lot of members. Were you in Idaho? I lived in Rexburg, Idaho for two years. And yeah, pretty much like everybody, everybody was a member, everybody. My dad taught at Rick's College, which is no mo longer called Rick's College, it's called BYU Idaho, but back then it was called Rick's College. And I remember taking swimming lessons at Rick's College and the men's swimming team came in after our swimming lesson was over. And I did not get out of the pool fast enough before they started to do this big ring. They all locked hands or arms or whatever. And they were swimming in a circle and they were causing a whirlpool. And I kid you not, I almost, I was trying to get a ring that had dropped on the ground and nobody realized I was still in the pool. And 
their undertow, like the sucking of their, like the whirlpool they were creating was unreal. I almost didn't make it out of the pool. I don't know what it would have happened if I hadn't managed to like latch onto the ladder or something. I couldn't even scream because I was like half in and out of the water. It was terrifying. Just a bunch of like super muscular college guys like swimming in a circle. It's crazy. I could have died, honestly. How many artifacts are there in each place? Is there a number? <laughs> Halo is a chief you're looking for. I love Halo. I do have a special place in my heart for Halo. I'm bad at it, but I do have a special place in my heart. Halo was my favorite first person shooter until I played Bioshock. Now Halo is specifically my favorite multiplayer FPS game. I have had a really good time playing Halo multiplayer. That's really fun. I know I got that other artifact. <laughs> Susie is not a fan of my, I hate Michael Phelps. I hate swimmers. No, I have nothing against swimmers. Um, although one kid that I, he was my neighbor for a long time. He's the one that I said probably the meanest insult I've ever said to anybody in my entire life. Um, he was mean to me. I'm not excusing my behavior. I'm just saying I felt somewhat justified. It was the meanest thing I've ever said to anybody in my whole life. And it was awful. And I feel terrible about it. I also feel like he crossed a line in what he said to me. But he was a swimmer. And he was a super, super, super skinny little kid. He was a good swimmer. But he was mean. Why do you have to be mean to people, man? Like, why? 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 This life is so hard. Why do you mean to people? If you don't like somebody, just stay away from them. You don't have to be mean. Good gracious. You know, that does not explode all these as much as I hoped it would. I thought a missile would, like... <sighs> I've never played Halo Infinite, no. The only Halo I've ever played is um, the first one. I've never played any of the other ones. Um, I just realized I probably just went in the opposite direction that I should have gone because I was focusing on my stories. Um, I should go to Magmore is where I should go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. How do I get to Magmore? Okay, yeah, no, I'm going in the right, okay. I grew up in Blanding, Utah, small town about an hour south of Moab. Oh, that's right. I remember you saying you grew up near Moab. You grew up near Moab. That's right, that's right, that's right. One of them little, little towns. Those ones where like, is that one where like, you have like Escalani, where somebody asks, somebody says happy birthday, or no, Somebody says, Tina, will you go to prom with me on like the, the, the like marquee of like the movie theater and everybody knows who Tina is and who did the asking. <laughs> I remember going to Escalani, Utah, Escalani and coming across something like that. And my friends I was with, they were like, yep, everybody knows who that is. <laughs> I was like, probably. Yeah, I, was like, I had yeah. just, yeah, you were like. We had a good time there, though. We did lots of hiking. It was really fun. What? You've missed out on so much good story. Halo Reach, which is more of a prelude game, is the last good Halo game when it comes to the campaign story. I, I'm sure I've missed out on a lot of good story. I loved the first, I loved the story of the first Halo. I just, uh, well, what happened was I, my Xbox died and I just wasn't, I'm not a huge Microsoft person anyway. And so I wasn't willing, I was given my Xbox. It was a gift from a client of mine that was like, I have a friend that runs a pawn shop and I knew you were looking for a PlayStation. She got me an Xbox. <laughs> and uh, I was like, wow. Um, so uh, I played Halo on that and that was great. Andrew and I actually played it together. It's the only time Andrew's ever played a video game with me and he really liked it. He liked it up until the flood and then he was like, it's just become another zombie game. And I was like, so? 
It's Halo. It's fun. We're playing it together. You love this. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, I really loved it. But then my Xbox died, and then I didn't. I didn't feel any need to go buy another Microsoft like console. I think I got a PS3 after that. I think. Hmm. Interesting. Well. Well, I now have like a legitimate PC, so now I can play, like. I can play, like, the Halo Master Chief Collection goes on sale for, like, 15 bucks pretty regularly from what I've, whoa, from what I've been told. We didn't have a marquee on our theater, but that's how small we were. Got it. Like, Preston, Idaho. Tina, come eat your dinner. Knock that off, Napoleon. Make yourself a dang quesadilla. <laughs> okay, for the record, anybody that loves Napoleon Dynamite, that is what those little rural um, Idaho towns are, are like. Absolutely. 100%. Reminds me of Jeff Foxworthy saying, if you ever had to climb a water tower to defend your sister's honor, you might be a redneck. <laughs> That reminds me of, um, uh, in Gravity Falls, um, when Dipper meets, um, he meets all of Wendy's friends, and one of them is Robbie, who's, like, super, like, emo. He's done by T.J. Miller. His voice is done by T.J. Miller. And he's like, yeah, I'm the one that drew the big explosion on the water tower. And Dipper's like, oh, you mean the big muffin? Because it does look like a muffin. And he goes, no, it's an explosion. And then the other guys are like, oh, it kind of does look like a muffin. <laughs> Robbie, that's the day Robbie hates Dipper. From then on, the rest is history. Oh, you mean the big muffin. Oh, uh, we need to watch Gravity Falls. It's so good. Um, the one for me with the one for me was if directions to your home includes turn off the paved road. We lived on a dirt road. <laughs> there you go. Well, then. Okay, there it is! Oh my gosh. Surprise. Oh wow, that's really close to the beginning of this. I thought it was further in. I was wrong. Boom. Well, I got the other one here. So what, are there two in each place? My cousin has misspelled words in Christmas lights. <laughs> oh. This is why my dad wrote the Farley Family Reunion. Because everybody has somebody they have that, that they can like, or, or that they're like, oh my gosh, that's my Aunt Beatrice or whatever. So many different characters. But realistically, that's what makes me love people is that there's so many people, there's so many different types of people and I just, I just really appreciate people. I love people. Can't tell you how many of those actually apply to me and my family. <laughs> well, how do we get to Fendrana? Here? Oh yeah. Um, th so there is no boss in Metroid Prime. No. <laughs> in Magmore Caverns. <laughs> there are no bosses at all. In Metroid Prime. None. Nope. <laughs> There's... Magmore is just kind of a go-between. I'm okay with that. <laughs> After Omega Pirati, I am... <laughs> Question. Can you freeze these and just jump over? Oh my gosh! I never knew that! <laughs> Ah, I never knew that. That's amazing. Dude, I love people. I love being around people. People give me energy. And it can be virtually or it can be in person. Like, I, that, I, that's one of the reasons I love streaming is because I love being around people and chatting and having conversations with people. I love getting to know people. <gasps> Secret. That's a game I wish I could stream. Skull Monkeys? Oh my gosh. 
Skull Monkeys is something else. Secret. Um, can I jump on this? Oh, yes I can. <gasps> Hold on. Hold the phone. How do you... Um... Uh, oh, okay. Oh, right here? No. Yes? How do you get to those? She's more of a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader. Oh, Charlotte went through a period where she loved that song. We have a whole, like, little Halloween playlist, and she loves all those Halloween songs. Charlotte's favorite, 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 favorite favorite holiday is Halloween. She loves Christmas, but man, that girl loves Halloween. I have questions. How do you get over there? Is it on here? Or... So parenting advice. How do you keep your kid from listening to those super annoying versions of everything? You just don't play them. <laughs> you have control over, I mean, you have, okay. You have semi-control over what your kid listens to. I'm a firm believer that, yeah, you're gonna hear your fair share of nursery rhymes and things like that. But I feel like you have some form of control over how your kid's music taste comes to be. Like Charlotte has great music taste. We listen to great music together. Um, I think introducing your kids to video games is actually a really important thing too, because um, she really loves listening to like video game soundtracks, which I think is great. Um, but we just don't play a lot of those. Like I, I never, oh, I didn't think I could do that. What I did was I went to the library and I got, um, I got all the CDs of like all the Disney songs and stuff. And I put them all on a little music player for her. Oh, crap. And then when we went on our walks in the mornings, that's what she would listen to. So like Disney songs, yeah, you're gonna hear your fair share of Disney songs, but like the really obnoxious like wheels on the bus and stuff. I mean, you're gonna go through a period of time where you're gonna like listen to those. But I do think you have you have a say kind of in, in how to shape your, how to shape your kids. Um, you know, what they like to listen to. Um, if you just don't play it <laughs> ever and they don't realize it's a thing, you're not really gonna, you're not gonna really, really listen to it. Like I refuse to play kids bop. Absolutely refuse. Might as well just listen to the freaking song. We don't listen to, you know, songs with bad language in them anyway. So why would I play kids bop? We just listen to the actual real song. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Charlotte has pretty good, pretty good taste in music. She really loved her Disney songs for a while. Um, but you are gonna go through a period where, you know, your kid is definitely gonna listen to things like that. Like it's just gonna happen. But I do feel like you have a little bit of control as they get a little bit older. What, what the really hard part is, is watching the same crap over and over and over again. Like watching the same Disney movie over and over and over again because your kid loves it. They only want to watch Nemo or they only want to watch, you're having a little girl. So, you know, Disney princesses will probably be a thing. I don't know, maybe not. There are plenty of other little girls that don't like Disney princesses, but there are plenty who do. It's good to, try to get them to watch multiple things so you have multiple choices instead of just being like, okay, we're gonna watch Ariel for the umpteenth time. Uh, do I wanna be famous? Yes! I don't think so, not really. My rule is original artist only. I don't listen to kids singing cosplay, Coldplay songs. We will listen to Coldplay or something else. You see, like you do, you have some, some form of control because you're the one that's in charge of the media, right? Like you're the one that puts it on. Some people also just have a much higher threshold for that kind of stuff. Like some people can listen to that stuff over and over and over again and not ever, you know, not ever really get bothered by it. And then some people are like, if I have to listen to freaking Baby Shark 
one time. I refuse to play Baby Shark for Auden. She's she's only ever heard the Super Simple Songs version, which was a Halloween version where all the sharks were wearing cartoon or costumes, and that was kind of cute. But we never played the actual Baby Shark ridiculousness because I I wouldn't I wouldn't stand for it. I just never. She doesn't even know it's a thing. <laughs> so I mean. I don't know. And Charlotte really likes, <laughs> Charlotte really loves NSYNC. She loves NSYNC and she loves Weird Al. We listen to Weird Al together. She loves Weird Al. We used to listen to it every morning. Watching Critical Role? I don't even know what Critical Role is. <laughs> Ava was bopping her head to some metal the other day. Oh, Auden was doing the same thing. It wasn't metal, but Ander played like some 41's fat lip and Auden loved it. She thought it was great. So it really just kind of depends on what you listen to. I mean, your kids will kind of follow along, you know, whatever you listen to. A lot of parents feel like they automatically have to play those songs for their kids, and that's not really true. You can put on, you know, you can put on, on whatever. If your kid starts, like, sobbing and crying because they hate what you're listening to, well, then maybe you should change it. I remember listening to a comedian that was like, I was convinced that I was going to make it so my kid let listen to heavy metal. So when my kid was born, guess what we listened to? Black Sabbath. You know what babies hate? Black Sabbath. <laughs> you know what babies love? The itsy bitsy spider. He was like, if you were all babies right now, and I said, the itsy bitsy spider, you know what we would all do? No. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. You know what you would all do if you were all babies right now? You'd go, down came the rain! Babies love Itsy Bitsy Spider and they hate Black Sabbath. <laughs> so you will go through a period where you're going to listen to some of those songs, but you have some control over it. Oh, Hall of the Elders. Wait. Is there a Hall of the Elders in here? There is. Somewhere. Careful with that song, though. It mentions serious issues like abortion. Oh, that is true. That is true. I had forgotten a lot of the words. Like, I couldn't remember all the words, but that's true. Because I do remember... Oh, yeah! I remember coming across that line, and, like, Auden was, like, headbanging, and Charlotte was headbanging, and Andrew and I both went... <laughs> like, we looked at each other across the table, and we were like, well... I stopped listening to heavy metal when I discovered light fabric. I cannot believe she never went to sleep! This child. My first, um, uh, oh, it's a bunch of nerdy voice actors that play D&D. Oh, they swear, though. Gonna make sure we get some earmuffs. See? There you go. My first experience with Baby Shark was in 1996 with a youth group worship band. Then 20 years later, somehow it becomes a thing. That's so funny you say that, Chain, because my first uh, introduction into Baby Shark was at girls' camp. Where we sang... Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark mama shark do 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 mama shark and then it gets bigger papa shark i think there was grandpa shark <laughs> anyway it was girls camp so then when it became popular i was like hasn't this song been around for a really long time like i thought this was just silliness of girls camp i didn't realize this was a real song but Apparently, that song is the most viewed video on YouTube. So, there's that. Baby Shark is terrible. Don't ever let your kid listen to Baby Shark. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, that's right. We have to go into re the research core. I remember now. Okay. Um. 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 Oh, Fendrana's Edge. That's where we have to go to. Okay. Okay. I have directions. That is so far away. Okay. So I'm he here. So I have to go above and behind me to get to. Where am I going? Where's the Hall of the Elders? Chapel of the Elders? Wait a minute. Nope. 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 Too much baby shark. And I'm done. Never coming back. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what else we listen to. I mean, the super simple songs on YouTube, that's those have millions and millions of views too. But for good reason, because kids do like that stuff. You know, they like, we like the Halloween ones, the ones that are like, um, oh, let's see. Knock, knock, trick or treat, who are you? I'm a vampire, I'm a little vampire. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's like, it's all animated and it's cutesy and Auden loves it, but I don't. The, you know what though? The, um, the Halloween ones I feel like are better. There's that one and then there's like, who took the candy from the trick or treat bag? Oh yeah, I could sing all those songs for you guys. So it took over Gangnam Style? Yes, it did. Gangnam Style is still up there, but I think Baby Shark has, um, I wanna say it has over, okay, this might sound absolutely insane. I wanna say it has over 20 billion views, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's 17 or 12 or something like that, but yes, it did take over Gangnam Style. Um, because parents put it on repeat for their kids, right? Like, yeah. We've all done it. <laughs> Super simple songs are, are, they're cute, but Auden really likes those. Um, but I, like I said, I really only kind of like the Halloween ones. Imagine that, you're just, just freaking walking around, just minding your own business, and suddenly you're just blasted by a freaking blast of straight pure lava. What a way to go. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh. Uh. leave me alone. Just passing through here. Just passing through. Um, Omega isn't awake. She's simply dreaming of being in a mosh pit at, Oz at an Ozzy Osbourne concert. Oh no, she is wide awake in there. Great. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Ozzy Osbourne does the voice of the metal um, dad in uh, Trolls 2. It's wild that you can even understand anything he says, but yeah, he plays he plays um, Queen Barb. She's the queen of the metal trolls, and her dad is done by Ozzy Osbourne. She sings a lot of his songs, actually. Uh, I think they do Crazy Train, and then I think they do another one. I can't remember. Yeah, 12 billion. Okay, yep, I knew it was something. 20 billion is a lot. That's a lot. But I knew it was somewhere up there. 12 billion views. And then Gangnam Style has what? 4.7? Yeah. And it, and it is. It's just these parents that just put it on repeat, right? Because the super simple songs are the same way. Super simple songs all have, a, you know, like 12 million, you know, 40 million, something like that. Th that type of, those types of views because parents are just putting them on for their kids. I've done the same thing. <laughs> just put them on and just been like, okay, this is what you want to watch. Right now she's really into Sesame Street. She really likes Sesame Street, which is cute. And I'm fine with Sesame Street. No, there are all these Halloween songs that I think they eventually turned them into like Christmas songs too. Hayes! Hey, Hayes. Welcome, how are you? Uh, I don't remember which time zone you're in, but I hope you're having a good time zone day. Wherever you are. Like, I know where you are, but I'm, I can't remember. Okay. We're heading into my least favorite place. Uh, uh in Fendrana. I was going to say in the game, but that is not true because I hate phase on mines with a passion. Burning passion. Burning phase on passion. The video with 4.7 billion views isn't even the original video. It's the animated version? What? <laughs> well, there you go. See, here's the thing though. A lot of that, a lot of those views came back before YouTube started doing its YouTube music thing. So when people were just looking to listen to just the song, they had to play the video. Now you've got YouTube music or whatever, where you can just listen to the song. It's like a, you know, it's like a music service. Um. So that's probably where most of those views came from, were people just listening to the song. Where'd you go? Oh. Are these guys stronger than the ones in, um, 
Phase on mines. Oh, I guess I can do this and see where you are. <laughs> eh. I love that he's going to run down the entire length of that platform instead of just jumping down to come after me. When his brothers jumped clear across that chasm in uh, uh, phase on Mines. Why are you not going where I'm making you go? There you go. Yeah, he's going to follow that whole thing all the way down. He's so good. He follows the rules. Huh. That seems like something I would do. It's like that scene in uh, Baymax or Big Hero 6 when Wasabi's driving and it's the car chase and he's using his blinker and stuff. And Gogo's like, did you just use your blinker? And he's like, you have to, you have to show that you're initiating a turn. It's the law. That's, that would be me in the car chase. <laughs> the original video only has 31 million. Really? Oh, that's. That is very strange. I would have thought the original, like the original music video, I would have thought that music video would have had the, all the billions of views. That's so interesting. Oh. Well. Either way, baby shark, man. The spring is nice over the 49th. Thank you. It's afternoon here. Same as you. One hour difference. Got it. I couldn't remember. This has been a very warm spring. It's been kind of cold in the evenings, but it gets hot during the day. <sighs> I hate this place! Oh. And I hate you. So much. Because I can't see you, and I feel like that's very unfair. I don't ever get a cloaking device. Or... Suit. The original vid is the one with the animated cover. It's still a live video. Oh, okay, that does make sense. The two, the the thumbnail is animated. Yes, you are right. You are you you are right. Um, I don't know why the thumbnail is animated, but it is animated. Or the the music video is actually like real people. That was Anders' ringtone for a really long time when he called me. It was Gangnam Style. Ah! Ah! Die! I hate you. I can't see you. No, I love all of you. I love all of you. I hate all these freaking guys. These clown shoes. When are these gonna break out? Like, when? It's just a matter of time. When are these Metroids gonna break out and come after me? Because it's just a matter of time. <gasps> oh, oh, oh! This feels like Bioshock with all the lights off and everything. Gosh, you can't see hardly anything in Bioshock. Everything is so dark. I have in a heat visor or whatever it is. Uh. Yeah. See you later. Okay. Actually, I don't think it's worth going back to my regular. Oh. Uh. Okay, we're looking for the... Okay, I know where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. I also hear a secret. I think? I think I only hear the Metroids. Um... We're ankle deep in the 80s. <laughs> no, baby shark! Oh my gosh, that dead painted lady. That did me a... That did me a scare. <laughs> that sure did me a scare. I think Gamey Grandpa for that one, right? Didn't he was the, wasn't he the one that was like, no, you need to go into the watery basement. Or was that that part? No, the watery basement was where there were all the... Mannequins. <laughs> and mannequins freak me out anyway because they remind me of Silent Hill 2. And I hate that so much. Oh. Oh. Can I kill you with a super missile? Oh, that's right. I remember now I got a super special move. 
definitely definitely knew that was the thing. Oh, both actually. Basement and the wine store. That's right. That's right. Are you white? Can't tell. Are you an ice guy? No, they don't have ice ones here. They just have regulars. Well, see you later. Okay, I think there's a save point in this room and this is where I'm gonna have to leave it because I'm gonna have to go get Charlotte in 15 minutes anyway and I've gotta go pull Auden out. Auden out. She's been in her bed. She's been in her room for almost two hours at this point. It's probably too long for me to just leave her in her room. Actually, you know what I'll probably do? I'll probably go get that um, artifact because I think it's just in the next room. Two hours just singing Baby Shark to herself. <laughs> the one that Super Simple Songs does is slightly different. It goes, Baby Shark, do, 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 do. Baby Shark, do, 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 do. Baby Shark, do, 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 do. Baby Shark. So it's different, slightly. But we I've only ever seen the Halloween one where they're all in costumes. Um, and the dad D shark is like a shadow and they're all swimming away from the daddy shark and they're scared and then they find out it's the dad anyway so i actually don't even think she really recognizes the song because it's not even the original baby shark song i don't know but i've never played the baby shark song on there for her upper 40s low 50s in the chicago area right now that sounds lovely actually true story I would much rather have it stay cool for longer because our summers get so brutally hot. I would just really love to still have some cooler sweater weather. That would be great. That would be great. Okay, yeah, so this is where the artifact is and then I will save and then I will sign off. Ava would watch it every day. Then I had to sing it to her at night and that turned us into doing hand shadows to the song before bed. That's adorable. We sing songs before Auden goes down as well. I always did that for Charlotte as well. We sing together before she goes to sleep. Um, I usually sing her just like church songs, but um, I've started, I actually, she has this book that we got from the library. It's called Snuggle Puppy by a woman named Sandra Boynton. She's done a whole bunch of kids books. They're usually board books. And uh, it's like a little, oh, what? How many of you are there? Way. Oh, that's another one from the Halloween songs. Go away, spooky goblin. Go away. Go away. The animation, I will admit, the animation is super cute. So the videos are they're 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 watchable. Uh, it's like these three little kids that are like walking around on ha on Halloween night and they're like goblins and stuff coming after them and they just tell them to go away. <laughs> So they look like super spooky and then they're like, oh man, and then they leave. Is it over here? Oh no, is it there? Great grandma, twice removed. Twice removed doo doo. Yes. Great grandma, twice removed doo 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 doo. I'm confused. I feel like I needed the plasma beam for this. I can hear it. Listen. I can hear it. Oh. What's that? Oh. Okay, so then I'm supposed to shoot that with a super missile? That's where it is. Go away, spooky goblin. Go away. Yeah, he's like... And he, like, walks away with a really super angsty look on his face. <laughs> the animation's really cute and it's it's fun, but you know, do I love watching those? No, no, I do not. I would rather have her watch Sesame Street or something like that, but it's fine. We don't watch super simple songs that often. She likes Sesame Street right now um, and she really loves Trolls 2. Um, she likes Finding Nemo. And... Uh, 
Yeah, those are kind of... Oh, and she likes Big Hero 6. But she does get scared when the fire happens, um, which Charlotte was the same way. Charlotte was really nervous when the fire... Water. Ow. How do I get out of here? Oh, that is... Nope, that's not... How? What? <laughs> goblin, yep. Spooky goblin. Have I shown my kids any Looney Tunes? I have not, actually. I love, like, the old school Looney Tunes. I'm not talking the Looney Tunes now. I'm talking, like, legitimate old school Looney Tunes. I... I don't remember having... Oh, wait a minute. I think there's, like, a... Looney Tunes is hysterical. Like, the old school Looney Tunes. Cartoons did not get much better than those. Those were so great. They're hard to find, though. Where do you watch them? Do they stream them anywhere? I remember Cartoon Network years ago had something called June Bugs, where every June they would do 48 hours straight of old school Bugs Bunny cartoons, and it was phenomenal. We used to laugh ourselves silly on the couch. Am I missing something? I feel like I am. My guy Bob Bergen may take that personally. No Looney Tunes. Oh, HBO Max has them. Oh, I think I do remember that. I think I do remember that. Because we had HBO Max for like seven days. Seven. I have all the questions. Michael, you just finished this. How do you get out of here? Is there like another area? I feel like there's... That's what I used to love about the channel called Boomerang. Yes, they played all those really great, like older... Am I supposed to like blast this? Yes, no, no. Am I supposed to walk up that? Oh, I'm supposed to... Bu okay. I gotcha. Okay, where's the save point? Where? Okay, I'm headed in the right direction. All right. We're going to go save. Um, I'm not entirely sure exactly how many artifacts we have left. I may or may not beat the game next time. I don't know. It might take me... Wednesday and Friday, but we will see. Could be wrong. I'd like to think I am just that good, but I I don't know. Cause, cause yeah, we'll see. We shall see. Bob Bergen had been the voice of Porky Pig for the last 30 years. Who does Porky Pig now? Is it Billy West? Cause he does a great Porky Pig. We have one of those TV antenna channel between the channel that shows old Looney Tunes. I love Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes was great. That was some great comedy. What's Opera Doc? <laughs> I love the Rabbit of Seville. Oh my gosh. All of them. They're all so great. You could finish it next stream if you have a good memory. You mean if I remember where all the artifacts are? I feel like there's one in the Hall of the Elders. That's in Chozo Ruins. I just got one in Fendrana, and then I need to get another one in Fendrana. And then there, I got the two in Magmore. So that means there's three in Chozo Ruins, two in Magmore Caverns, two in Fendrana. Tyler Brow, 2000. Like a Nimbus 2000? Because the Nimbus 2000 is great, which means you're great. Thanks for following my channel. Welcome. I'm about to sign off, actually. I'm sorry. I have to go grab my baby who never went to sleep, and then I have to go get my daughter from the bus stop. Um, Have you ever played this game, Uh, Tyler? Because it is a gem. It's lovely. I love this game so much. If you remember the fight patterns of Ridley and the Prime. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think I vaguely do remember the fight patterns of Ridley. I don't know if I remember the fight patterns of Prime. But I also don't want to feel rushed. So we will do what we can next time. And uh, we'll see where we get. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, so next time will be Wednesday at about 1.15 p.m. Central. And we will pick up right where we left off, right here. Did I save twice? Because I always save twice. Can't be too careful. Uh, oh, the Coyote and the Roadrunner ones were always great as well. Those were so great. That was back in the day when you didn't have to have warnings that said, please don't try this at home. Uh, yeah, I, I love old school Looney Tunes. Yosemite Sam is one of the funniest, in my opinion. Yosemite Sam, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, all of them. I, I, I love them all. I have a special place in my heart for all of them. Um, uh, so Wednesday, I'll be back, 1.15. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say other than if you want to join my Discord, feel free. Um, that's where we... That we have a great sense of community there, but that's also where like stream schedule changes. If there's any, ever a, like a stream schedule change, that's where that is. You know, we have watch parties there, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, and you guys can go see the picture of the shelf I put up all by myself. <sighs> so proud of myself. So proud of my shelf. <laughs> I've, that may sound stupid, but I've never done anything like that before. I've always waited until Andor got home and been like, can you put this shelf up? I did it on my own and I have two more shelves to put up on either side of it. But I, my arm was tired from like holding the shelf up and I could not hold it steady enough to like measure it. So I'm very, very proud of it. Um, but, uh, oh, and look, Michael's playing Metroid Dread. Um, you're about to get this game on Friday. This is a lovely game. You're gonna love it. You are going to love it. Metroid Prime is probably one of the greatest games ever made. If I am gonna be 100%. I did it myself, yep. Sometimes I can come up with good jokes. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's everything I have. So I'll be back on Wednesday. I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I love the follows, the new people that came into chat today. So nice to meet you. I'm happy you're here. I hope to see you again. Um, I love streaming. I love being around people and bringing people together over the same shared passion of video games and Samus. Um, uh, you guys are awesome people. And thank you so much for supporting me and something I love to do. Um, and uh, don't ever forget how important you are and how much you matter. Susie's so proud of herself. Uh, it is, it, it's a great game, Tyler. I'm excited for you. It is a great game. And they did a great job with the remaster and everything. Like, it's, it's wonderful. It's an excellent, excellent game. I prefer, I love all of them. There are three primes. Uh, there are three, there's like a prime trilogy, but I love all of them. My favorite one is the second one, but only by like this much. I love all of them so much. Um, I love that clip. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna watch that clip. I love it. Thanks for clip. Thanks for clipping my shelf. Very proud of myself. So I'll see you guys on Wednesday. And uh, thanks for being here. And um, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day or night or time zone or whatever, wherever you are. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Adios. See you later.